Hello everyone. Why is the game not capturing? Tell me why. There we go. Yeah, there was no good reason. I just needed to like click on the properties of the game capture and that was it. Uh, welcome back. We're here again with more Disco Elysium. It is a Thursday afternoon. I'm going to move my camera so that it's pointed a little bit more with me in the center. Yeah, I don't know. That's the best I can do. Uh, yeah, so we're back. We did quite a lot last stream. Like, it was quite a lot. Uh, we have to ask about Ruby in the village. Ruby left the village. Ruby was the accomplice in covering up the murder. We don't know if she actually had any involvement in actually killing the person. But we need to, excuse me, find out. Our water is right over there. So give me one second to just put my water on the table. There we go. Poured my water, water all over the table. Now it's right on there. No one can say that there isn't water on my table. Covered every inch, every centimeter, every square centimeter. Anyway, so we were tracking Ruby down to the uh, fisherman village. And she left early in the f morning of the first day. It was like 8 o'clock, which made me wonder, could you beat the game in like the first couple of minutes if you knew exactly what to do? I don't know. We'll find out. We're still on the fourth day, but it's the evening of the fourth day. So we'll probably wrap up the fourth day today, get on to the fifth day. As I understand it, most people finish the game within the seven-day cycle. Some people, but it's programmed to go up to like 10 days, I think. So we'll see, we'll see uh, what we do. So explore the coast for science is the next main objective. We have some things that are uh, opened up to us. There's a composure check. I'm not too concerned about that. As you can see, we were not being composed last stream, even though we upgraded it. Uh, this stream, what are we doing? Uh, post investigation? Sure. There we go. So, there are a few things I wanted to look at today. I'm trying to remember what they were. Oh, last stream we actually did some karaoke. It's very nice. It's a touching moment. It wasn't yesterday, it was last stream, which was Tuesday. Uh, yeah. So here are our stats, by the way. We, we put a lot of points into Motorix, even though it's our worst, well, it's our tied worst uh, field of skills. Yeah, and our thoughts, we're still working on Wasteland of Reality, but it has 3 hours and 48 minutes left, so we will probably wrap that up the stream as well. And I'm looking at like what our next, oh yeah, we did unlock a, a slot for thoughts, uh, but we need to decide which one we're going to actually think. We could do Searchlight Division, it's about missing persons apparently. Data Birth Generator seems like an interesting one. A lot of interesting things that we could do there. But I'm not going to commit right at the start. Let's do some investigation. So it is the very late evening of the game. We did unlock a shack to sleep in last stream. So we can stay there instead of the hostel. And that means that we can save 20 real, which is very nice. We don't have to gather our 20 real, 20 real for tomorrow's stay. We can just stay here and keep our money. But we did already pay for it tonight, so we'll see if we stay there. Let's do some quick investigation of the coast. So I was wondering, how out of order did I do this investigation? Because um, this seems like the main quest's attempt at trying to get me to... Wow, this is really pretty. Are trying to get me to look at the area and explore it which I've already done I've done that a lot I've covered a lot of ground I went the wrong way so clearly I need more practice investigating this area and exploring it because I don't know my way around apparently or at least not by instinct this is the church right we could maybe do some more in the church today I don't know we still have plenty of time hello Ben what is that emote? Ah, Dibble. Huh. Is that meant to be like an audible joke? There's also this door. We still can't get into it, can we? 
Yeah, let's walk away. So let's look for any signs of our suspect on the coast. Hope everyone's doing well today. This is kind of the area I want to check because it's the one that we've done the least exploration of and the least stuff has happened here. And that leads me to believe that there may, in fact, be more to look at. Someone has had a fire here. We hear some boats in the distance. Okay. Can't climb up here. I wonder if at the boathouses she left some signs, this ruby character. There's still this trap. Should we check it? Why not? Just dead and dying locusts and the slow swaying of surrounding reeds. Poor things. Thank you, Empathy. And that made it move to 8 o'clock on the day-night scale or day-night system. Whatever. In an hour, we'll have the ability to sleep. But until then, we'll get to do some more evening-related activities. Night-related things. Welcome to Night City. Something, something, being a criminal, something, something, getting caught. Keanu Reeves, buy Cyberpunk 2077. That was the Cyberpunk 2077 marketing plan in a nutshell. Uncheck that. There's still this phone here, this payphone. I wonder if that is anything. The machine is operable. No, thank you. I don't want to spend 10 cents right now. Dial a random number. Hmm. We've been completing a lot of quests recently. A lot of things. Wasn't there... No, the boy and the father is by the other building. That's right. Can we look at this? Well, maybe they were here. Maybe they're just not here right now. Belled mural. You see a once bright mural towering above you. This signage has peeled off over the years, but you can still make out felled electrical R&D. A slogan used to intertwine with the loops a long time ago. Now only a shadow of peeled letters remains. It says tomorrow is just a whisper away. Tomorrow is just a whisper away. Looks like tomorrow never came. The lieutenant raises the color of his bomber jacket. Step closer. Above the mural, a collapsed roof, broken windows, set in walls that are cracking and will soon also fall, and the coastal breeze rustling and sighing in the remains of the edifice. Feld Electrical. How ironic, all these dark rooms. Feld Electrical. You only know them as a small company that makes ink cartridges. Looks like they used to be big. There's something in the wind. Sometimes the only way to go forward is to fall first. Could Ruby be in there? In there? She could. Oh, the lieutenant points behind you. She could be in the identical ruin over there. Or in that board shack. In that church tower, maybe. Why single out this one building? Shivers. Ooh. Hmm. There's a lot of... There's a lot of bonuses that I don't really see tying into this. Uh, I can upgrade my shivers quite a bit. If I... I'm pretty sure there is a piece of clothing that will increase my shivers ability. This one. Is there another one? Uh, yeah, this gives me some shivers. I don't think anything else does. Okay. Anything decreasing my shivers? No. Let's try it. 72%. Pretty high. Success. I think we just... Okay, we went one over. Even though you're sure you succeeded, all is quiet. There's no cold hand brushing against your forehead, no rustle in the reeds. The wind has died down. The rune in front of you is silent as a tomb. What, I, what was I even attempting to do here? 
trying to talk to the wind, the city, whatever you thought would happen did not, and now you're just standing there, in the dusk hour, with your hands falling to your side. Is trying to talk to the city something you've done before? Is it in your secret repertoire, a trick for when you're out of ideas? A prayer of some sorts to Revishol? Turn to the lieutenant. She could be anywhere. How do we find her? How do... How do we? I was really hoping she'd be in the village. The lieutenant's eyes then gets a hold of himself. Okay. She's probably north of the village, and this place is a peninsula. It looks north. We already scanned most of the outdoor areas on our wild cryptid hunt, so we have an understanding of the geography, at least. Then there's the church. It looks at the bell tower. We've already searched that and can rule it out. I know it doesn't feel like progress, but exclusion is a step too. Hey, we got 30 experience. What's up, Arshiv? Gang, gang, gang. Anyway, we do it in the old-fashioned way. Sector by sector. Go over the whole peninsula. Ask the locals. Enter the places where we can enter first, like we did in the village. And if that fails, if we don't find her... Then, if we're desperate, we can look where we can't enter. Bunkers, storm drainage, this place, I'm sure it won't come to that. He looks behind him, at the dark red box crumbling across the chasm. Walk the coast, the old boardwalk, the reeds, you can always come back here and talk to the wind again. Look where it already got you. Oh, is that the new pog champ? Interesting. I haven't seen it. Buckle up and raise your collar, this search is going to be wet and cold. We can listen to the wind again. You don't need to, though. Got well, 30 experience. That was nice. Uh, let me put the clothes I had on back on. Because I like them. So, did, yeah, we completed Ask Around. So now we need to... Let's just keep searching the coast. Okay, that's nice. We have a way... Uh, sort of to get hints uh, as to where this person might be. Is that a thing to look at? There's a slit in the concrete here. A sewer. The light vanishes inside the concrete slit. The structure goes deep under the earth. What's in there? Maybe it's just a storm drain or the sewer. Yell ho into the slit. There's no echo and no answer. Kim, any idea what's down there? No idea. He takes his glasses off to polish. Are you going to stream FIFA packs for uh, Toti? Yeah, exactly. Yeah, why wouldn't I? The... No, it's a tournament of the year. Definitely. I think I got it exactly right. Team of the year. Oh, yeah, 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 yeah. Oh, that's what I said. You must have misheard me, because that's what I said. And obviously. That's why I'm a FIFA, uh, FIFA streamer. I wouldn't I stream it. Could be connected to one of the buildings around here. I think we might find Ruby down there. We might find it down somewhere. There's an old storm drain system beneath Martinez that's mostly collapsed. Rebishol's sewage system has been built and rebuilt four or five times now. He puts his glasses back on. In conclusion, she could be under any building, but not in there. He looks into the system tires. I hope not. Finish all. Which card are you hoping for? Uh, you know, Ronaldo, Messi... Um, Pogba, uh, uh, Gomez, Mario Gomez, um, if we could get a hazard, that'd be pretty sick. <laughs> this is how I write essays as well, so I, I say words that I've heard before. Ogba, yeah. What's wrong with Pogba, bro? Gomez is such a sweaty card. You know it. <laughs> I know nothing about FIFA. But he won't make... Okay. If, if that's... In your opinion, he won't. But, uh, you know... Wait, take a longer look at yourself and how you're reflected in that slick chemical rainbow. What do you see? Metaphor. It's always metaphor. Some kind of metaphor for me? This is more important than you. That's the blood of industry you see before you. The runoff from Coal City further down the coast. The engines of fortune once roared here. Great wealth poured into Revishol. The Delta. As did smoke, waste, sickness, life. What happened? The engines stopped. Oh, he wasn't nominated? 
in your opinion. And and in their opinion. EA got it wrong again. The rest Revisholian indus industrial base was dismantled after the war. Now extinguished coke furnaces dot the landscape. A landscape despoiled by industry. Yeah. Yeah. I don't see the problem. Revisholian moved on to a service industry. Here with the times, yo. West Revisholian industrial base? That's so me. There was a serious dereliction of duty in this cleanup. Perhaps you could dedicate your life to cleaning it up, but you're a cop. You must concern yourself with different messes. Even so, it's pretty to think. Is that what he said? Might have been Etty. Yeah, agreed, agreed. EA kind of looking bad. And also they lost the rights to, well, I mean, they didn't lose the rights. Their rights to the Star Wars franchise expired, so now they won't be the only ones who can make good Star Wars games, or any Star Wars games, because I don't... Oh yeah, they did make... They published Fallen Order, I don't know if they actually made it, I don't think they did. Um, but yeah, it's good. Other studios can have a go. Once again. So we don't just have to look at Battlefield. Although Battlefield 2 is still free on Epic for another 45 minutes. If anyone wants to pick up Battlefield 2. Uh, is there another place to look? I think if we go this way we might find some stuff. Oh, yeah, that's where I was. My bad. If I go this way... This way. Anything new to look at? Oh yeah, here's the trap. Why don't we look at the trap? The trap is filled with dead and dying locusts. Most of them aren't moving anymore. You still can't see a phasmid anywhere. Poor things. Yep. The Star Wars game coordinator was saying that all the best games are yet to come. Clearly he's talking. <laughs> yeah. He knows what's up with EA. He's like... You know, guys, we can finally make good games again. Aren't you excited? Aren't you, as fans, excited? And the answer is yes. I'm pretty sure. Ooh, what's this? Reception site. A scattering of bullet holes is spread across the cracked wall, reaching from one corner to the other. Look, Kim, even more bullet holes. Something's definitely gone down here. Hmm, correct. The lieutenant examines the wall closely. The density of the bullet holes is unusual, even in a general average bullet hole frequency in Martinez and Grim Affairs. Meaning, this is a lot of bullet holes. He brushes the wall with his hand. Looks like fully automatic for rifle fire. Something you don't see these days. Who's doing Star Wars now? Oh, is it just Ubisoft? I thought it was basically anyone <laughs> who collaborated with the Lucasfilm or Lucas Arts or Lucas Interactive Studios, whatever they call themselves now. But if you say it's Ubisoft, I'm considering you the expert, Arshiv. Hmm. Why not? The manufacturing and sale of automatic rifles was curtailed after the, after the revolution. The destructive power of such tools proved to be too much. We do need to retain some humanity in this <clears throat> in this world. Oh, swag. Uh, I know, Ubisoft can be either hit or miss. Visual calculus. I think I have a way of increasing my visual calculus just to make this a little bit more certain. I mean, it's 83%. So, uh, yeah, but I can do this. Just to raise it one more. Yeah, 92%. I'm more confident about that. I rolled low. I rolled really low. <laughs> but I got it. A row of ghostly shades stand facing the wall. There are many of them, a dozen at least. Their heads lowered and eyes blindfolded it. Uh, eyes blindfolded. There's a full stop there that I can see. It's quiet. No sound, no movement. Ten meters away, other shades are lined up in an orderly manner. Automatic rifles primed. A gust of wind blows by. The coasts of the coats of the firing squad flap slowly in the breeze. A single person stands on the side. Droplets of rain fall on the wooden planks. The surrounding sand dunes. The clouds block out any rays of light. Jeez, it's a grim scene. 
A long time has passed since the moment of this fusillading. Rain and brine have since washed all the blood away. Not a trace remains. What is this? The abundance of bullet, hole, bullet holes leads to two options. Either an inordinate amount of executions were performed here, or they did not use a conscience round, where only one soldier has the loaded rifle. Looks like this was a mass execution and everyone fully armed. Look at the people against the wall. A host of men, probably in everyday clothes, rag ragged from the conflict and covered in dust. They were not sitting, a common practice for executions in some nations, as demonstrated by the height level of the bullet holes. They stand, facing the wall. It's impossible to discern any details about their personality or background. Ordinary people, familiar each and every one of them. Who were they? Collateral damage on the path toward normalcy and progress, such as your belief, officer. Maybe you should change it. They were praying, screaming. Look at the line of soldiers. Seven men in combat uniforms and dark coats, holding automatic rifles aimed at the people. Soldiers from some side, but which one? Men of duty, dark duty. Who were they? In all truth, violence offers no answer. It's only the last available res resort when all mediation fails. And here, all did fail. Look at the person standing on the side. The commandment, the one who gives the order. Machine gun fire crackling through the air, the lights of the muzzle flashes dancing on his face. Kim, who was who in this execution? At first the lieutenant doesn't say a word, he just stares at the wall. I don't know, he says finally. I don't know who died here, lined up beside that horrible wall. It could have been any of the parties involved in the revolution. Perhaps the ones executed here were the loyalist conservatives killed by the communists at the start of the civil war. Or it could have been the communists put to death during the last stretch of the conflict about the coalition forces. Remember what Trent Heidelstam said about Feld? What if it was the Feld personnel when their assets were being seized by the revolutionaries? The lieutenant nods. Another likely scenario. Or maybe, what about people from the coalition? The so-called moralists? Yeah, it's very unlikely the coalition forces were the ones who died here. They were always the last ones against the wall. To be honest, if a coalition member was anyone in this situation, it was the commandment. The superior giving the orders. <clears throat> Goodbye, leave. A cold sea wind blows away the figures. Great. Back to being a noir detective. Anything else? Oh, okay, it just goes back to you having this scene here again. You know, Ubisoft have, or Ubisoft have made some good games, though. I think their Rayman series is pretty well received. Uh, they did some stuff with... Wait, it was... Watch Dogs was Ubisoft, wasn't it? Uh, at least the first two games were apparently decent. The third game I've heard very bad things about. A door, a building, a hiding place. Could the instigator be inside? Who knows? Um, what was another thing they made? They made uh, Mario and Rayman, uh, Rabbids, sorry, not Rayman, Mario and Rabbids Kingdom Battle. Some, actually, I hear that game's quite well received almost universally, despite the presence of Rabbids. So, I don't know, maybe they'll do something good with the Star Wars games. At least they have, like, basically, a, they have a lot of money, and they can kind of just do whatever they would like to do. Maybe they'll take some cues from the Fallen Order. With the lightsaber combat, I hear that was something that was enjoyed by many. Doesn't seem like there's anything else here. A few locusts trudge along the wall of the trap. The rest are piled in a heap on in the corner. Dead. No phasmid anywhere. Okay. It's not very cool. Okay, let's check the boardwalk. Why not? Let's go up here. This was quite a confusing area when I first came here, but I've at least got my bearings. I've had time to get my bearings. Okay, nothing there. 
Anything on this side? Doesn't seem like it. We could ask the programmer in the church if she's seen anyone that matches Ruby's description. Yeah, we have options. Nothing here, it seems. It's a long way down to your death from here, 20 meters at least. Okay, and we can't use the telescope. Or this one. Binoculars? I don't know. Anything new in the dustbin? No. Okay. What if she killed the guy that was here? Because he saw her. That would be an interesting little twist. To find out. Okay, let's check in the church for any any sign of her. Yeah, I don't want to run in here. Have you seen anyone suspicious, say a woman named Ruby? What? No. No one suspicious around here. She has not seen her, sire. It is true. Okay, right. I'll let you work in peace. Looking here. Looks like I can't give this figurine. Why? Because she's a stained glass window. That does seem to be a problem. Maybe you meant something else? Okay. Turn away. Yeah, I don't know. I wonder if uh, TiVo is still here to talk to you. Could these wire works? Wires work as contact microphones. Yeah, probably. Came from the stained glass window, still has letters on it too. What did. Is there broken glass here? Oh, that one, maybe. Yeah, I don't. Whoops. I don't think we'll find anything new here. Oh well. Let's get going then. I still like this track a lot though. I think it's a very beautiful track. Very beautiful piece of music. So where next? Uh, maybe we could ask the people... Here. Let's ask you first. I don't really want to talk to them right now. The gang in there. Have you seen a red-haired woman around? No. Just no. It's pretty desolate here. I only hear the dogs bark at night and see the shadows move down the coast. That's good. No neighbors to complain about noise when you get the club going. Considering what we're do trying to do here, this doesn't look like a good sign. Superstition. We can turn the Grim Desolation into a fun dance club. And that's also helped turn this hellhole around. Okay, that's it for now. I guess I got laser. Thank you, autosave. I don't know why you had to do that. Maybe it's a time thing. Maybe it's like every 30 minutes. Or... Yeah, it's been about 30 minutes. <sighs> Hi again. So, uh, how things going? Nah, that's it for now. Never mind. They can't help me. I just, I can tell. I can tell they can't help me. What's our journal say to do? Yeah, let's just keep searching the coast, I guess. What 
are some of the other tasks on our um, thing? Offer figures to Dolores Day. Okay. I'm not doing the nightclub. Jam Mystery is kind of like this is becoming part of the main quest anyway. Hold on to the spirits. Yeah. I haven't found the murder weapon. Hmm. Joyce hasn't given us info on the lynching. Still can't replace the lost ball. Okay. Yeah, I think we're we've got everything under control for now. Let's uh let's look at the I guess south or east or northeast or whatever. I don't know what that is. Let's just look around a bit. Maybe ask these gentlemen. Yeah, maybe Doom Spiral knows. Tequila Sunset. Have you seen a red haired woman named Ruby around here lately? Can't really remember seeing any woman after losing my keys. It's a touchy topic. He hasn't gone late in ages. He already has no idea who this Ruby is, sir. It did Doom Spiral. I am ready now. I've seen it. Tell me the story of Tequila Sunset. Mm hmm. Let me take a sip to moisten up my cords. He takes a big sip, then begins. Tequila Sunset rolled into Martinez last Friday. By Tequila Sunset, I mean you, the man, the myth. Wait, did we meet on Friday? Hey, let's not jump ahead of ourselves. This is your story. Stop interrupting. He takes another sip, then continues. You got here on Friday to solve a case, hoping to be the early bird who gets the worm. And by the worm, I mean the buzz. Because as far as I know, all you did was get pissed drunk. Word on the streets is you went around the local hostel telling people that you're a police officer and that it would be really effed up if you shot yourself in the head right in front of them. That's pretty high concept if you ask me. It is. The lieutenant's brow is furrowed. He's listening as casually as he can. What happened then? It was a late Saturday night when we, the Union of Moribund Alcoholics, were getting our drink on. Nothing remarkable about this, we get our drink on 24-7. Makes everything warm and glowy. I trust you know the feeling. One moment we hear the sound of a motor carriage revving up somewhere on the plaza, followed by a series of dings and bangs. Do you remember the sound of wood cracking the billboard? Oh, do you remember the sound of wood cracking the billboard? Naturally, loud noises pique the interest of anybody owning a pair of ears. That's just the reality we're in. Naturally. Anyway, there was a brief silence, a gasp of silence, if you will, followed by a real commotion. We heard the carriage careening towards the coast at top speed. It sounded like someone jumped the canal. We grabbed our brewskis and rushed to the jetty. Never underestimate the speed of an alcoholic. What we saw was a sight to behold, a beat up police carriage containing you right there on the beach. You revved the engine and screamed at the top of your lungs. The time hath come. So naturally, being the curious cow I am, I asked what time hath come, to which you replied, The time hath come for Tequila Sunset, the end of all things. Oh god, what happened next? Oh god, what happened next? Your reality contracted, you jammed the pedal, plowed right off the jetty and through the ice. We ran towards the ice whilst you crawled your way out, miraculously unhurt. Covered in sea and uh, seaweed and stuff, like some kind of sea monster. When we finally got there, you were sitting on the beach, crying. You said that your badge and uniform were in the car. It was too late to get in there, though. The carriage had sunk too deep. Recognizing a brother in need, we offered our condolences and invited you to party with us, which you naturally agreed to. We asked about the whole tequila sunset thing, and you told us it was your name now, and insisted that we call you that from then on. Tequila sunset, huh? Sounds pretty good. My real name is Harry. No, that's just what your mother called you. Your real name is Tequila Sunset. Just embrace your brother. How long did we party for? Hours. It was an all-night drinkathon, and at some point, I think it was Sunday morning. We got belligerent and wanted to talk about Revachurlian woman. 
of the beautiful and also whores and so on. How one of them effed you real bad. After a short while, you crossed the event horizon, looked sullen, got up, and left without saying anything. Well, that's quite a story. Yeah, I bet Tequila's a damn legend around the precinct. You must be proud to work with him. If only you knew. Did I tell you anything specific about this person that effed me up? Oh, that effed me? You were pretty vague about it, but you kept saying you got effed real hard. And that we've all been effed too. Please don't open that door. No one's left me. I do them around here. That'd be good. Seemed pretty painful, to be honest with you. But I guess I'd say you're still working through some stuff. Did I mention losing anything else? Besides your gun and your badge? You said something about your hope or heart or something. To be honest, the details are a little hazy. In retrospect, I guess you lost your murder carriage too. That's a big one. Did I say anything about my colleagues? You told us that they were a bunch of damn losers whose main interest was cramping your style. It's more like you were cramping theirs. No specifics though, it was about you that night. You were the star of the show. Did I say anything about the case? Yeah, you said it was no biggie and that you'd solve it in no time. He takes a strong quaff of his beer and that you didn't need anyone to do it. You're doing it solo now. A lot of cops go solo and hermit once they reach that level of alcoholism. Some meant as a joke, he's sorry for the hermit cop. Did we talk about um politics? Yeah, you said that you'd really behaved unreasonably and failed to uphold your responsibilities as a representative of the coalition. Did you get a read on what kind of cop I was? Yeah, you kept apologizing for being such a bad cop and for the damage you've inflicted on everyone around you. You also kept pausing to knock the heel of your hand against your temple saying, Stupid, stupid, stupid. I don't need to hear anymore. No, it's a hard thing for a man to confront his past. That's why I avoid mine at all costs. You seem like you're characterized by your storytelling ability. Want to tell me another sometime? whoop de doo Snarm a dang storyteller. He says, slapping his knee. Right, why not? Better than a beach bum. Yes, one tell me how you became idiot doom spiral? It depends, really. Are you willing to help me out? You might get scammed here. I have a feeling that this is going to cost me a lot. No, the reality of the situation requires a rather modest contribution. A little motivational package. What do you need? Booze. Did you already forget our party? He taps his finger to a symbol. The thing I relayed to you earlier? So, have you got anything for good old idiot Doom Spiral? A bottle for a story? Seems fair to me. Uh, I don't want to give you any alcohol, I'm not an enabler. In that case, I'm not a storyteller. He crosses his legs and turns his gaze towards the ground. He seen you. Okay. As you turn, a bright light catches your eye, making you squint. Cool. So cool. Where's it coming from? From a distant sunset? A stage light? Flash photography? Nowhere in particular. It's just what superstar law officers do. They squint at lights and they solve stuff. See, now that I hear superstar and law official in a sentence, they sound weird together. Uh, yeah, that's me. I've been establishing my superstardom hard lately. Yeah, you have. You're a big dick cop. Dick Mullen. Salam Rocky Bye. Badass. On the edge disco cop. I'm to recede into a ludicrous fantasy world. Here we go. Camera. Lights. Action. With the sun flash, the world freezes around you and you along with it. In an iconic monochrome solution, a black silhouette against a rasterized orange world. It's on. And we got a new thought for that. We got some kind of superstar. Minus two on logic. Problem. First, let's make this absolutely clear. No one is saying you're an actual superstar in the groupies and cocaine riddled with hepatitis C strikes a lion-esque pose with the mic kind of way. Not Guillaume Le Million or Davy Dewis. No. You're a metaphorical superstar. You bring that rock and roll authenticity and passion to a line of work where you people don't expect it or want to see it. Where some would say it doesn't belong. Law enforcement. Okay. Um, I'm fine for now. Let's still see how waste end of reality works out. You could ask any of the others, maybe if they've seen Ruby. The legend, he's back and thirsty. I got smokes and piss and a little speed to spice things up. Uh, I'm off now. Damn good. Rumble's an unshaven man with a ruddy nose. He narrows his eyes at you as if in recognition, then turns his head away. The noxious odor emanating from the drunken man is strong and familiar. Don't cool, are you here? Don't cool, Abigail. 
Uh, who is Abigail? Oh, Abigail. He draws out a disgusting smell with the mumbles, oh, waving a finger in your general direction. You're not going to get anything on this guy. He's too drunk. Yeah, walk away. Yeah. Well, it did say we wouldn't get anything from him. That's not going to lead us anywhere. Anything around here? Don't think so. Up this way. Hmm. Let's just look around a bit. The houses and whatnot. See if there are any signs of people staying. I bet she's under that boat. That's my bet. Under the boat. It's a classic trick. We even thought of it. Any sign of someone being here? Doesn't look like it. Let's keep looking around. Nothing we can do here. if there's anything by the ice. Nah, it doesn't seem like it. It's almost nine, which means that Kim will go to bed. That's good. Hmm. Is there really nothing else around here? Oh wait, there's a boat. Hey, this is Joyce. I'll just keep the quarterly in the channel if that's okay. It's too shallow near the pier. She winds the mooring line around a post. Hi, Jetty, by the way. Of course, Jetty. I prefer a good jetty mm. to appear any day. Jet, jet, jetty. <laughs> Something about the way she says it makes you want to sing. Jet, 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 jetty, the jetty. Oh, Jetty, oh, Jetty. She responds mournfully. It's good to see you here, detectives. Then secures the morning light. I arrived myself. What brings you here, madame? Nothing, really. I've had my eye on this jetty for weeks now. Okay. So I decided to investigate it personally. This cluster of buildings isn't on any of the official maps, as far as I can tell. Okay. That, and she's also keeping an eye on you. Have you been spying on us? Okay, uh, so how do you like it around here? How do I like it? She casts her gaze toward the village. Slush melting on the cinder blocks construction work left half finished ten years ago. Water drips down eaves of Eternite. The jetty below her... The jetty below her feet creaks to the tune. The smell of salt and dog manure in the background. It's pornographically poor. The street has no name. All the men are dead or missing. And is that the carcass <coughs> over there? Bless me. She squints her eyes. I'm surprised that woman hasn't put me to the sword yet. Maybe she will. You should ask your questions while you can. Okay. Dark eyes surveyed the coast leading up to Martinez. Dull grey metal rests in her scabbard, a sword. The wind is too loud for her to hear. For you, madame. The RCM is on the scene. Indeed. Alright, politics time, let's react. Real men, real politics, real thoughts in your head. You're right to be scared, this is all your fault. You're in no danger, the working class have no idea what's happening to them. Try not to be scared, this is just how the real city looks.
Oh, I'm not frightened, officer. I'd never... She leans against the railing, looking up at the grey sky. Have I told you how they discovered this place? The wind picks up, her raincoat flaps in the gust. This... This island? No, the Insulindian Isola. No, you haven't told me how they found it. Well, your condition has left you no worse off than most of these people. The literacy rate is around 45%. Excuse me, west of the river. 50 years of occupation have left these people in an oblivion of poverty. 45% is around where I operate. Things are getting better, though. Uh, I don't like either of those options. Say nothing. It's a pity. Most of these people will never know what this place means. This island of matter. And why they were ferried over the, in the first place. Remind me to tell you one day. She cricks the scarf around her neck. But now, how can I assist you in this new location? Tell me now, we have time. Tell me something else, then. Of course. I hear you singled out a suspect and are in pursuit. This is cause for cautious optimism. How can I help you at this juncture? Do you know something about these tattoos? That's the man who was killed. She almost takes the photo, but then stops. I'm afraid this is a discussion for once we've cleared the lynching question. So you know something about the tattoos? Better not to tie the four state to the backstory uh, to the backstay on this. I hope there is something else I can help you with. She won't start the question protocol. Keeps her from it. Okay. Mm -hmm. Tell me about wild pines. What do you do? Yeah. Okay, yeah, yeah, yeah. I spoke with the lawyerman at the roundabout. Yes, yes, okay, nothing new. Mm. Uh, tell me again about this drug trafficking. I heard something about a complex operation earlier, this adds up. She nods, I'm glad to hear, officer. I'm sure you'll find out just what that means soon enough. Uh... Mm hmm. Uh... What proof do you have? Uh, do you think they're financing the strike? Okay. Uh, okay. Okay. Nah, I guess she has nothing new for us. Thank you. That's all for now. Can I take your boat? Let's tell Kim to leave. Good night, Kim. Good night, officer. We'll meet you in front of the shack in the morning. Into the shack. But we're not going to sleep. At least, I hope not. Anything new? Any new thoughts? No. Okay, it's fine. Let's go back out. And now we can do some things without Kim. Currently doing solo work. So let's see what the check on. Let me zoom out a bit. There we go. Let's see how the odds are for this. When he's not here. Down. Look at those little bastards. Mm. Simmer down. Simmer down, bastards. Mm. You seeing you? Uh, what can increase my suggestion? Anything? Anything at all? Eh, literally anything. Oh, well, this is mine thing for my suggestion. Let's put a... Put this one on. Then the waves are beginning to die. Oh, it's just eight percent. 
pretty rough. Let's go talk to... Um, what's her name? Class here. Let's talk to her now that we're alone. Could work out. Who knows? Then we can try that 8% one, I guess. That wasn't too long of a walk. You certainly look quite cool with our trench coat on, if I do say so myself. Oh, apparently we can keep our composure here. I believe. Let's try. Yep. Oh well. We'll just have to keep investing in composure, it seems. Oh, it took the long way, I just realized. It's fine. It's fine. How's everyone doing today? Myself, I'm doing pretty all right. Officer, what brings you up here in the rain? Oh, that Kim isn't here. Let's talk about Sunday night. Ah, uh, yes. She pours herself some more coffee. The night before I saw you in that. The night before I saw you in the hallway and reminded you you're a police officer. It's one of the first things I remember doing in Elysium. Before you was only the room. The sound of the motor vehicle steam in the bathroom in darkness. Wow, she nods. Elysium. You don't hear that term often. She's a glib girl, but she liked the wording. Did you hear something Sunday night from my room? It was the usual ruckus. She nods. Loud disco music. Did I have any visitors? I can't say. Probably not. Sounded like you were flying solo. You mentioned loud disco music? Oh yes, various artists. Ostentatious orchestration, prime among them. She arches her eyebrow, waiting for it to connect with you. Oh that, yeah, whew. The less said about oh, the better. Oh, oh, we're huge where I come from. I was very young then, of course, like seven. Life gets hard, she says, half singing. But we go on. Yeah, we go on all right. I don't know about that. At around two o'clock, the disco stopped and there was a change of pace. What happened? A slow, sad song started playing, like organ music, on repeat. That went on for quite a while. Some of that time you were yelling along to it. What was I singing? Was I singing this? Yes! There was a church in there, a really small church, like the smallest, saddest church in the whole world. It was about that. And also, what else? That it doesn't matter anymore. That we are alone now. It was difficult to tell. The song itself was very quiet and soft, but he sounded like a wounded boar, sir. It's hard to understand what you were singing on top of it. When you say wounded, do you mean that in a cool way? Then what happened? Then you started screaming and trashed the place. Hmm. Are you sure I wasn't being assaulted? No, it didn't sound like that was a fight. Like there was a fight. It sounded like someone was trashing their room. She takes a sip of her coffee and smiles. A window was smashed, the tape player probably. The song stopped. And furniture too. A real destructor thon. It was screaming. Then I think you passed out. Was there anything else? There was. I think you screamed that you didn't want to be this type of animal anymore. I may have misheard, but it was sort of memorable. I went out afterwards. Everything was quiet by then, around four or five. She nods, and that was it. Thank you. 
And we've got 10 experience. Nice. No problem, sir. She finds us, uh, feeds herself another cigarette. Gone low. Uh, we could put a point into volition if you really wanted to. Let's return to this later. Let me get some drama clothes on. Anything else for drama? I don't think so, but let me just check. Minus for drama. Do, do, do. Sure, let's just try it. Officer, what brings you up here on the roof? Forty-two percent. Let's try it. Yep. But we are awake, sir. She has been forthcoming with sordid details women usually conceal. Most shocking details of the sexual kind. We are a bulwark unbreached. Get a hold of yourself just once, will you? Try and look past the sexually lax morals. And do some police work. So you say, but give us one example of deceit. Just one example. Just a proposition. Could the lurid explicitness conceal something less sensational but more illegal? Is this personhood picking these seditious options? Can't you see the detective grows weary of your malcontent? Stop staring at her eyes and say something personal to the case. This is making you look like an amateur. It looks like this one's not waking up. You'll have to do it without pushing her further. At least for now. Let's turn to this later. Oh well. Back to the noir costume. Oh, that didn't help. How much experience do we have though? I think we have a fair bit. Seventy-two, yeah, not bad. And how much longer on this one? Two hours thirty-five. Hmm. Nope, that's not what I wanted to press. Ah, there's the hitbox. I always forget. Okay, well, let's try... Let's try something else. I wonder if I can retrieve the tape from here. Now we re we retrieved the cassette from there. Hmm. Anything out here? Let's just see. Fortunately, our actual like health stats haven't really been going down at all, so at least we haven't had to worry about that. But yeah, we do some experience right now. It's on our journal. Hmm, we could talk to Komi Manana. Why not? I think it'll be about the name thing. Thanks to Twilight Tequila. Uh, tw no, what's it? Sorry, Tequila Sunset. Let's just have a look. Why not? We also haven't found. Oh, Classia is pronounced Classia. <laughs> Or classier. Could be classier. But I think it's classier. Thank you for the clarification, game. Yeah, but I was going to say we haven't been picking up a lot of bottles recently. We could also just sit down on the bench and think for a while. That'll help the thought cabinet along. Hola, wandering man. How can I help you? Ooh, it's high now. Yeah, I have a name for myself. It's Tequila Sunset. Uh, do I have anything that'll boost my? Uh, good talking to you. Got to run. Let me just see if I have anything that'll boost Inland Empire. Uh, the necktie, but I can't have both. Hmm. No. Unfortunately not. Doesn't seem like it. Not even my shoes. Okay. 
Let's go for it. 72% is pretty high. How can I help? Let's try it. Yay, success. And it was yeah, it was pretty handy success. The encroaching doom is golden red. It is inside you, but also outside, on the horizon, by the water's edge, innermost but yet to happen. Things make sense from that angle. Your tequila sunset. You have always been tequila sunset. It has always been too late. The name's Tequila Sunset. He reaches his hand out to you and shouts, Boy Adero. The man is deeply moved. You see his eyes turn teary with appreciation. He is extremely happy for you. Shake his hand. You receive a good, strong handshake in return. What's a Boyadero? A really cool guy. It feels like there's an entire history behind the word, but it doesn't really matter. You got it. You know what it means. Nod knowingly. He takes a swig from his flask, then offers you some. The idea of alcoholic swill uh, sloshing around in your bloodstream feels fairly unappealing. Thanks, how fast. I just go wild. And then we might go wild together, which sounds fun. But I guess I have a strike to watch. Is there anything else you wanted to discuss? Good talking to you. Gotta run. Nice. Did we get anything from that? How much? Okay, well. Let's see what else we can do. Um... I guess let's sit on a bench. It would just help the thought along, I think. And it also looks pretty cool. Um, think deep thoughts. Yeah, let's do that. Time passes. You wonder if it could rain so much that it would drown all of Martinez, then everyone would have to go on about their day in diving suits. Let's get up for a second. I want to just check my uh, thought cabinet, how that... One hour and thirty minutes left. Let's go again. Let's think deep thoughts once more. Thinking, guys. Thinking, Pog. Time passes. Okay, and thirty minutes. Stare into the sky. And breakthrough imminent. Time passes. Darkness is head. You don't even know what you're waiting for anymore. Let's get up. And our new thought. Wasteland of reality. We. This was not good. Congrats, you're sober. It will take a while for your body to remember how to metabolize anything that isn't sugar from alcohol, so you're going to be pretty ravenous soon. Eat plenty. You can expect your coordination and balance to improve in a couple of weeks. In two months, you might start sleeping like a normal person. Full recovery will take years, though. It'll be depressing, and it'll be boring. Don't expect any further rewards or hand claps. This is how normal people are all the time. Yeah. Minus one in Inland Empire, minus one in Suggestion. Minus one in physical and instrument. But plus one in psyche. No positive effects from the alcohol. Hey. And maybe other good things will come from it, hey? What else should we have? Let's get something... A little more fun going, perhaps. Maybe not that one. Let's maybe try... The Searchlight District. Yeah, why not? I guess. Okay, but our stats aren't bad. Physical instrument one isn't awesome. But it's okay. Good boost composure, that'd be nice. Not too upset with it though. Yeah, let's uh let's just maybe go to sleep then. Seems like a good time. We could spend the night in the shack.
We could also spend it in the the hostel, but it's fine. No need for that. So yeah, that um I was expecting more bonuses, but maybe maybe it'll be good in the long run. Yeah, let's let's enter the shack. Let's call it a day. There was also, I mean, I internalized the socialite district one, but there was also the... Or was it that the one I actually did internalize? No, Motorway South was the other one I was kind of interested in. But maybe we'll get to that. Uh, no time to rest yet. I just want to check this. Was shaving the right call? I don't know. Let's get some rest. Go to sleep. Yeah. The bed underneath you is soft, if lumpy. Waves wash the sand underneath the hut, then grow distant to your ear. In the quiet hum of the organic heater, you fall asleep. Like a deftly cast fishing net, sleep pulls you out of the world and into its dark shore. The rough mess chafes, then... Tightening around you, it digs into your brain. Great, this is gonna be really chill. Yeah, yeah, just let me sleep. How have things been going for you out there? Helped anyone lately? Saved anyone lately? Murdered anyone lately? Why would we have murdered anyone? I'm a little worried. This bastard isn't even listening to you. Because you know you are a murderer. A disco music listening psycho killer who offs poor people. And then forgets about it. Oh, I don't care. That doesn't scare me. That? You are naive to think he's afraid of his bloodied hands. Soul brother. Oh no. I see inside his amygdala and his hippocampus. The thing he's really scared of is much, much worse than that. Why are you doing this? I just want to sleep. What is Don't it? Don't tell him, sister. It's too bad. Okay, I believe you. They're right. This is their function to keep you from it. Why are you doing this? I just want to sleep. I can almost We're see the dark. trying to help you. All these processes, these tortures, voices and tremors are all just distractions, flares and mm. countermeasures yeah. to keep you from the last dream, the worst of them all. The last dream. The last dream will be total annihilation, cinders. Peeling off the fuselage. We won't be there to help you anymore, Harry. We will be dormant. You will be naked and alone. And the air will smell of apricots. Of hell. An ancient sadness, brother. Ten thousand years later. In front of the video rental. There is a warm breath on your face again. Everything is okay again. Everything is so okay. I can't wait. I can't wait. Your eyelids flutter open for a moment. When you close them again, you sense the light of the room around you. You're back. In two seconds, the alarm will ring. The last thought in your head before waking is, maybe you shouldn't have seen that stained glass window in the church. Open your eyes. Think about our old woman, I suppose. Why are we on the chair? Not the bed. He's looking around. 
Come on, Harry. Don't break your neck. Don't break your neck, Harry. Okay, day five. Let's get into it. Let's jump right into it. I hope he made his bed. Hello, Kim. Good morning. Yep, it's still raining. Let's keep exploring. Maybe Joyce has something new to say, actually. Let me check out the jetty. Because I kind of want to go to the little island in the middle. Aye, the sea's going to calm down soon. I can feel it. The wind is turning southeast. What's on your mind, officer? Be seeing you. Yeah, I guess it's fine. I just kind of want to rent a boat. You're back. Good. Uh, yeah, that's all for now, I guess. Okay, let's just have a look around. Maybe let's uh, look at what's going on in the mainland. How much longer is our thought going to be? 8 hours and 10 minutes. No, wait, it's this one. Three hours and nine minutes. Okay. We'll have that, you know, by the end of the, the day. So that's nice. Is this open? Nope. It is not, in fact, open. Okay, let's check somewhere else. Let's just look for anything new. Stuck. These people, yep, they're still chilling. Oh, who's this? Oh, it's Martin. Officer, the Kerto play came with a lonely old man. Actually, never mind. It wouldn't be the same. Where is Rene? The prick is gone. He replies, trying to smile. I, I can barely believe it, but he's really gone. Gone, gone. Gaston sighs and mumbles, more turns off than you. Hell, most likely. Oh, wow. Was he really that bad? I repeat, an absolute... That word. <laughs> he turns to look at the crater. Even his old army buddies didn't want him around. He was like an old viper. The only people who could stand to be around him were Gianni and me. Or Johnny, I don't know. She saw something in him when we were just kids, and his voice trembles. Uh, and she never lost sight of it. And I thought if the most beautiful thing in the world can love him, then there must be something worth holding on to. How, how did he die exactly? His angry little heart finally gave out. He sighs. The dock workers found him in the guard booth this morning. He wasn't even supposed to be working for another week, but he just had to prove how tough he was. Did he feel like he has to prove he can still pull his weight? Doesn't need handouts? Guess he was about to head home, because when the dock workers found him, he was wearing civilian clothes and not the cockatoo uniform I saw him in all the time. Sometimes I thought he was wearing it just to piss me off. Gaston smiles a sad smile. Now the joke's on him, because he's going to be buried without it. Do you think our conversation about his job pushed him to go out there? No, he replies quickly. Renee was the most stubborn man in Revachol. Nothing you or I could say would ever push him to do anything. The man was completely immovable. He has doubts, but right now he just wants to move on and not think about it. Did you love him? We've hated each other our entire lives. So much, in fact, that before science looks at you, eyes filling up with tears. Yes, I, I love that angry prick. He didn't deserve it, but I did. He wipes a smile with his sleeve. You know what his last words to me were. Tell me. In Guillaume's time, you'd have been shot without a trial. That's what he said to me. The old man gathers himself and wipes his eyes again. He lived a beep, and he died a beep. Let's leave it at that. Here, yeah, something to remember your friend by. Give him the photograph of Rene and the girl. Let me see. Gaston takes the photo in hands trembling. This was 60 years ago. 
We all went to that parade. Young Rene looks so happy. And Johnny. Eyes blurry with the tears he has to stop. I'm sorry, officer. I just... He dries his eyes. Thank you. Thank you for this little memorabilia. It really means the world to me. That was nice, the lieutenant smiles. A small thing for us, but an invaluable to him. Probably didn't even know Rene had the photo. I offer you my sincere condolences. Yes, the lieutenant nods. We are both very sorry for your loss. It is what it is. Part of life, really. He mumbles, only half listening to you. But to know someone for 79 years, and one day they're just gone. I just don't know anymore. About anything, really. He slowly shakes his head, then remembers your presence. But you... You must need something. Too bad Renee's gone. I was hoping to ask him about Maybells. But we did. The old man stares at the flower, then sighs and says, Renee wasn't really what you'd call a botanist officer. And believe me, he didn't like Insulindian lilies. Why didn't he like them? There were many reasons, but mostly it was the communards. They called them the Bells of Revolution. Sighs so passes up his face. I guess in the end, the Insulindian lilies were just another piece of the old insulin. insulin. The royalists had to surrender to the Mazovian insurgents. It doesn't really matter anymore. But you feel the dried flower in your hand somehow still does matter, although not to the sad old man. I want to go over a few more things about Renee, if that's okay. No, okay. Bye for now. I didn't get to return the ball. That's unfortunate. It's quite sad. <sighs> oh well. I'm quite sad about that. <laughs> Happens though. Hello, Garte. Hey, is there something you needed? Well, well, bringing him that new bird sure made a difference in his attitude. About my bill for tonight? Got the 20 real? Not yet. Yours is eyes, then why are you wasting my time? And yours. Goodbye. Now yeah, we just don't have to pay it anymore. Anything new? Again. I can't believe this shit. Okay then, see you around. And you? What is it? No, we're good. Yep. Uh, Titus, can you tell us anything? The Copper NATO is back. What do you want? Okay, about this complex operation out of Ruby's lorry. I think that's tied to another case I'm working. Nope. That's all he says, he doesn't even do anything. Next question. I want to go over a few things regarding Ruby's disappearance again. Uh, never mind. Okay. Going off now. Thanks. Okay. Let's just have a look around. My nose is really itchy. Don't know why. Must be dust. There's Kuno. There's this. Okay, so no horizontal boot prints. Whoever walked in the whirling and whirling's pinball workshop didn't walk here. No, these prints are pretty standard. The ones in the dust looked custom. Or maybe they're just a foreign design. It's a blueprint, whatever the case. So, our altar wasn't in the back of the whirling. I don't know. He inspects the odds all more closely. They're about the same size. Not the same boot, no, but they could be the same person. Okay. Nothing new then. Hmm. I wonder if there's anything new to talk about in here. Let's just have a look. Why not? Why not? 
Uh, let me put the flashlight on. Where is it? Ah. I forgot what color it was. Still can't open this. And this. Okay, let's just leave and keep looking around. Maybe we can find the actual murder weapon in here. No, I don't think so. Anything new here? Oh my word, it has red eyes. What's the door? Yeah, it's fine. Oh, what's this? Magnesium and 20. I mean, 2. Sorry, not 20. 2 real. That's nice. I don't know if that was always there. I got it now. I kind of like another point in volition, perhaps. So, can we do anything new now with the knowledge of the programmer? Oh, wait, maybe if we inspect the notes. this this old fireplace is covered in lines drawn in blue and red marker the mesh spreading over the stone like blood vessels on alabaster skin it looks ghostly and strangely ancient uh the whole thing resembles kedron mosaic tiles very santic um let's look at this press play again nothing happens okay insert the production schedule Press play again. Speaker comes to life. Good morning, fortress accident on Rue de saint Gelaine. This is Saint Insulin no, East Insulandian Repeater Station. Please repeat is the production is this the production? Yvonne, it's me again. How are you? Oh, good, thank you. It's not clear whether she recognizes your voice. Please repeat, how can I help you? Let's try out the password for the production schedule. Good, please repeat the password. Say afterlife death. Good, I've unlocked the production schedule. Ha! Huh. After ending the call, please press pr print to access the filament. Really? She used the she just used the same password? The lieutenant seems almost disappointed to discover that as he murmurs. Maybe those radio computer guys aren't that paranoid after all. Fortress accident, is there anything else I can do for you? Uh that's all for now. Thank you and goodbye. The old lady's voice disappears along with the static. Uh press print. The quiet determination the printer starts printing, a piece of paper unfolding like a handheld fan. A black crisscross of letters covers the surface. Read the printout. It's a project report written by the lead producer, Andrew Andy Schott, or Scott, about We're All Untethered, a radio game developed by Studio Fortress Accident. Excuse me. The first few pages give an overview of the capital and the workforce, while the rest of it seems to be a production schedule. Read about capital. I want to know about money. In its short time of existence, Fortress Accident SCA managed to burn through truly insane amounts of money. The first tra uh, tranche, tranche of seed financing brought in 150,000 real, but then came the delays. Eventually, the damage reached, four, reached 400,000 real with only half of the game finished. Gosh, where did they get all this money? Let's just say it was a real adventure for their Iguanagin investor. Iguanahan? I don't know. Read about workforce. Who worked there? How long? This is basically CD Projekt Red. <laughs> Fortress Accident employed 18 people. The bulk of the team composed of writers and concept artists. There are also... Okay, so that's a much smaller group than CD Projekt. I think they have like 500 workers. But anyway. Um, the bulk of the team composed of writers and concept artists. There were also radio programmers and sound engineers. The CEO, two marketing experts and a single overburdened producer who developed a habit of popping Perholodon in the basement to escape his obligations. Why did Fortress Saxon have so many concept artists? 
Wait, why did a radio game need so many artists? It didn't. It didn't need so many concept artists? No, definitely not. A few more producers could have come in handy, though. Especially when dealing with writers, some of whom routinely skipped work because of mental health issues and extremely unprofessional sleep schedules. One of them even managed to steal some valuable company property before skipping town for good. Yep, that sounds a bit like, well, except for the last part, it sounds like writers. Uh, the last one is uh, very uh, much an exception. Skim through the production schedule, whatever it is. The production schedule depicts their glorious descent into bankruptcy because of the concept artists. <laughs> no, not the concept artists. It wasn't even the writers, but their panic attacks and three-hour lunches. <laughs> It was impossible not to fail. The project was too large and no amount of money could satiate the ever-expanding ambitions of the development team. They tried to make a 4 million real game with 400,000 in their bank account. They thought they could bridge the gap with pure willpower and imagination. This is sad. They couldn't. Oh, so they are done in by their own ambition. No, even then success remained within an ever-narrowing margin of possibility that, despite everything, never entirely disappeared. That is, until they discover the value of the heads. The what? At the 11th hour, the lead designer, Zaimsk-born uh, Sulislo Zoviza, decided that what we're all untethered needed was a secret myth mystical location at the extreme edge of the map. Of course she did, or he, or whatever, I don't know. I, for a second, I thought it was the same one who was in the church. That's why I said she. But uh, whoever that is, this place was to be the Valley of the Heads, where the heads of all the headless constructs could be found. The player would have been able to choose a head for their headless party member, and each head would have been voiced on air by a professional actor. That is insane. Who were these people? The world has never seen their kind before and might never again. How many heads were there? So many. At least count, at last count, there were approximately 10,000 heads for 10,000 headless men, all of which would be endlessly recombined. How many recombinations could, me, could you make out of that? A lot. Do you really want to know? There seems to be a calculation here, but it may take a while. Yeah, how bad could it be? Oh no, it's still going, keep going, oh no, the time is passing as I'm reading this, yes, oh no, oh no, it's still going. The lieutenant taps his foot impatiently in his arms, this was on the paper! Taps his foot impatiently, his arm folded uh, tight against his chest. Oh no! It's still going! Keep going. We have to show resolve in these moments, these times of crisis. Speaking of crisis, I've been watching more Justice League recently, like the original show. And uh, I intend to finish reading A Crisis on Infinite Earths. Just a fun fact. While wow, this continues to go. This is an infinite crisis. What if you broke the radio computer? What if it's never going to stop? Thank you, interfacing. Oh, it failed. Just let the numbers watch over you. Those are all zeros. And that's it. Okay, so that's what did them in. Well, yeah, that and the catastrophic data loss. The what now? This must be the anomaly sooner mentioned in the church log. On the nature of the dot loss, there's ominously little information in the production log. It comes at the very end, where things get fuzzy and dark, where tables and numbers seem to vanish into an eerie nothingness before their Iguanahin investor pulled the plug. What is clear is that one day, an unidentified numeric anomaly occurred on the East Interlandine Lintel Front, just as the Wirral and Tether Project was being compiled that day. Oh no, it was a compilation error. And the anomaly caused all the data to get lost in the air? When the project was returned, it was completely blank. The team spent weeks on the phone with Lintel, the service provider, but despite their diagnosis, they could never produce a satisfactory explanation or pay for the loss. What? They lost the whole game and wouldn't even pay for it? Wasn't there a copy of the game? A backup? Mysteriously enough, it seems that the off-site copy happened to be on-site when the catastrophic data loss occurred. It was the lead programmer's responsibility to oversee weekly maintenance of the off-site copy and, well, keep it off-site. An explanatory note from the lead programmer has been attached. What does it say? S. Lu Kanan Kilde. 
the lead programmer of Fortress Accident. The offsite copy was on site because there was no offsite anymore. Not for me, not after eight months of crunch. I suppose that makes sense. I didn't have a home anymore, so I started keeping it in the basement, in the ice bear refrigerator, near where I went to sleep. It was perfectly safe there. The temperature conditions were optimal. It's not very convincing, is it? Seems like a perfectly reasonable explanation. That's not what her colleagues thought. Is there anything else from this lead programmer? Production schedule ends with a few random notes that seem to be added sometime later. Read the notes at the end. Four months later by an unknown author. I'm the only one left and it's gotten rather damp here. A few other businesses have gone under too. Slipstream switched to making skis and the hairdressers just left, cursing Martinez. They're right though, something seriously wrong with this place. Martinez, all of it. Still haven't gotten an answer from Lintel about what happened. All I could get were the physical coordinations of the error on the insulin Indian front on that day. Since the computation happened on air, I reckoned it had to coincide with an actually existing location. I have compared the coordinates to a map of Rivershaw West. Turns out it's only 800 meters from here. The address is St. Brune uh, 1147. I'm going there to look this thing in the eye. St. Brune 1147. That's what the street sign next to this church said. Tear off the printout and throw it away. Tiles on the cube are still smoldering, casting the framework in a soft glow. Fluorescent play and print keys shine on the keyboard. Remove the production schedule. Leave. Nice! We could go talk to the programmer about that, if we wanted. May help. Anything else in here? I don't think so. Anakin's. I kind of want to go to the dice maker's uh, place. I think it's the. Oh, oh, there was something there. Yes. Oh, come on. Poor animals, no rest for their bodies after death. Yep, that's true. Can't even take that bird. Oh well. Uh, how do I get to the dice maker again? This is the gym. Smells like leather and sweat. Uh, this is the barbell. Ah, we might as well try. Nope. We definitely failed. Oof. You manage to hoist it off the ground, but the barbell feels wobbly and dangerous. Your hands slick with sweat. Turns out you're not you're no beast, just an old man with bad form. See, see, this place is cursed. Even your body has failed you. It's a miracle you didn't injure yourself. Seems like I'm a little out of shape, or maybe these gloves just suck. Upper weight lifting gloves would definitely afford a better grip, thirty ten degrees. Okay, let's leave. I think there was a way to go to the dice maker. I'm just looking for it. Ah, yes. Here's the door. Anything here? There are shoes. Oh, what's this? Oh, it's a postcard. We'll look at that in a second. I just want to take this flashlight off. Hello, dice maker. Oh, it's you again. Hmm. Uh, okay, more questions. Used to be a hair salon here, right? Yes, I think it was called Androgynous Orlando or something similar. They went a big hit around here. It turns out that working class men don't like genderless haircuts. They're scared of that world of that word. A bit of experimenting every now and then isn't bad. What's wrong with a bit of experimenting? The customers should have been more open minded. I guess it just wasn't the time yet. She tucks a strand of hair under the scarf. What happened to the gym? It wasn't really a gym, it was Artem Artemiteps. Boxing Club, a community project created to steer at-risk youths away from drugs and crime. Who is Artemitep? A kind man from Zmis... Zim... Zim... Yeah, that one. 
I heard he had some trouble with the law when he was younger, and that's why he wanted to start the gym, as his way of giving back. Maybe that's what Kuno needs, a community-centric boxing club. Hmm, Kuno. Her eyes narrow in the dim light. Who's Kuno? He's sort of the king around here. He's a little ginger gremlin who likes to defile dead bodies. Oh yes, you mean the kid with the sailor's mouth? Yes, I've heard him yelling profanities in the backyard. She looks out the window, it's oddly quiet there at the moment. I think it will take more than a gym to help that kid. How did that community project work out? It didn't. If anything, it made the situation in Martinez even worse. At some point, someone started a rumor that the punching bag downstairs was full of amphetamines. It's not really full of that. No one would store their drugs like that. Eventually, the coalition took away the funding and the club went bankrupt. This was a few years ago. It's got much more peaceful around. Excuse me, the plazas ever since. What's up with the broken windows? Uh, this one's a mess, she says. There used to be a company that promised to repair windows 24 hours a day. What could go wrong with this one, right? Turns out the business was actually set up as a front for an illicit group that was producing snuff milieus. Who would have guessed? Hmm, what's the stuff milieu? And they never cleaned up the debris either. Now it's just literally the, littering the hallway and I have no idea how to get r rid of it on my own. Ooh, very cool about the debris. Well, but what's a snuff milieu? It's a sub rosa radio station that broadens real that broadcasts real murders with real victims. Oh. Some people pay good money to get off on it. Oh oh no. Oh, it's it's snuff films. I see. Nothing changes in her tone as she says that, as if it's just another piece of information to lay out for the world. Don't worry, the ICP has a separate division that deals exclusively with unlicensed sub rosas. Lieutenant turns to you, this isn't our problem. Good luck with that. It's not easy catching those perpetrators. Then she lets the thought go. Did someone here make stuffed animals? I saw mounts lying around. You mean Mr. Fabron, the taxidermist? No, he mostly just did drugs. Anything else? <laughs> On creepy mannequins. There used to be a fashion atelier here, but I've forgotten the head designer's name. They were doing well for a couple of years until the insect rights activists came. The insect rights activists? Mm hmm The Atelier produced a certain collection that used chitin among the or chitin among the materials. Apparently chitin is made in the Occident where it's extracted from beetle wings. And you know how all kinds of political movements are big in the Occident. The activists shut down the biggest uh, chitin suppliers, which of course caused the price to skyrocket. And naturally all the most fashionable tastemakers refused to be seen in chitin from then on. The Atelier went bankrupt before they could finish the collection. I'm glad that someone took care of the little guys. I like insects. Yeah. Hmm, really? She looks at the windowsill where a dead fly is lying on its back, legs curled up in a bow tie. Anyway, poor guy. Suddenly get a feeling that insects are important to the case somehow. It's hard to say why. Ah, the Insulindian phasmid. Uh, what's with the rotor blades and skis? They were, uh, they were made by a company called Slipstream. After they pivoted from making rotor blades to skis, their chief executive took off on a vacation with all their money. She rests her chin on her hand with an impish smile. Honestly, I think it's quite funny. I think he's still sending out holiday transmissions from Tallulah or Tiamotiri or Kashtkor or wherever he is. Interesting, what do these emissions, um, transmissions say? The usual, I imagine, that he's been thinking up all kinds of new business plans and can't wait to get started on them just as soon as he returns. The smile winds before she sees the lieutenant's face behind you. Men like that are a curse. The lieutenant's a stern. Sure, but it's upstream in history now. All the remaining assets got seized by the bailiffs in 47. I have no idea why those skis and blades are still lying around in the house. Not much use now, I guess. They were just props. If I return to them. Maybe you could make a sword out of one. No wait, forget it. It would take too long. I found a strange machine. Fortress accident, the radio game studio. She closes her eyes as some remnant of a memory lights up her face. She liked them. They were an interesting bunch. We talked about role-playing systems every now and then. Once I even saw two of the, them get into a fisticuffs over Wirral. That's understandable. Fantasies are serious things. The mind is the drawing board of history. They certainly took their work very seriously, even if they seemed to be chronically liberal with their schedules. What do you mean, liberal? What happened? I heard they ran out of money. They had some kind of accident with the backup copy, right? An accident? I wouldn't know anything about that. I just heard they ran out of money and couldn't get the project done on time. Or went wrong. Well, I did hear them talking at times. She looks at the hallway as if she can still hear them chit-chat behind her curtains on a cigarette break. 
They seem to believe they were historical individuals on some grand quest. Which sounds almost mocking when she says that. From what I've seen so far, the project did look quite impressive. Yes, but when the money started to run out, they began to complain a lot about capitalism. You know how the markets are rigged to keep out new businesses and so on. In the end, they just didn't get it done. They didn't have enough willpower to produce something truly historic and to show up to work on time. She's right, showing up to work on time is born. Well, showing up to work on time is incredibly hard. That's too bad, I would have supported them. The project looked great. You're right, they should have just tried harder. They had everything needed to succeed. Not the wise decision, you would have lost all your savings. She tosses a pair of dice on the table. One of them stops near the edge of the metallic desk. The result is one on a 20-sided die. The dice... The dice, that's not right, is black and filled with little silvery flakes like snowfall. Anything else? I think that's it. Actually, I had other questions. Uh, leave. Okay. I think there's one more branch of this investigation I want to look into before we end the stream. And I want to just talk to the lead programmer from this project and then we can wrap it up for the day but we can call ourselves currently uh, get more people on this show <laughs> so I don't have to laugh at my own jokes obviously everyone else would laugh at my jokes they find me incredibly funny everyone not even just my friends just everyone yep. um but I find myself funny and that's all I really need in life nice and early 8:30. oh I'm sorry Gaston Martin, I think that was his name. At least some people have schedules in this place. I mean, they'll like go to places late at night, they'll leave places late at night. But I mean, it's still a little unrealistic for, for some of them. But it should be Friday, I think, now. So maybe tomorrow they, uh, the people just won't show up. I almost forgot where I was going. I'm going to the church. Let's just talk to the programmer. I'm curious if she believes that her project would have succeeded if it weren't for the signal. Yeah. The same address the lead programmer of Fortress Accident was looking for. Yep. And we can ask her. And there's also a board here. Is it continuing from where it left off? I don't know. Yes, what is it? Uh Hey, about the two millimeter hole again. Mm. So the research isn't going well. Uh, okay, does it have anything to do? Uh, is the hole connected to the data loss? Easy, you measure it bit by bit around you. Uh, what do you think it is? What qualities does nothing have? How do you measure something that does not exist? Uh, two. Exactly, you know, it's very true. That's what I've been aiming for. That's why I have those basins. I've tried using 
hydrotron's deuces to record the silence to find out where it begins. But honestly, it's not progressing very well. She goes silent, staring at her circle of basins. It looks like some ancient ritual. But does it have anything to do with necroplasmic forms, ghosts, and everyday parlance? Okay, that's all I wanted to know. Okay, what if you didn't have to leave? I talked to Andre, he wants to make it work. I don't want to make anything work, she replies her expression unchanged. Hold on, you don't want to make anything work? Yes, anything. I don't want to make anything work. Not the anodic dance music that's made her bitter. It's the failure of Fortress Accent. Are you bitter because your radio game project failed again? Ooh, we leveled up. That's right. Something strange shines in her eyes. We couldn't get our welkins to happen. I don't want anything to happen. Ever again. There's no trace of irony in her voice. She means it. Ooh, look at that. Let's go for it. Convince her to cooperate with the ravers. 97%. Chance. I'll take it. Easy. When her research is done, she can move out. Listen, about your research. She meant it earlier that's not going very well. Maybe I can help with something? What? She looks up from her work, disoriented. No, I don't really need any help with the project. But if I could help you finish the project, then you wouldn't have to live in a church next to the boom boom anymore. Just think about it. She thinks about it, a glossy look in her eyes. A gust of wind brings more snow in from the broken gallery. It touches her hair. All right, she finally says, blinking twice. Bring me the game's offsite copy from my old workspace if you really want to help. It's stored on a filament memory, and I'm unable to go and fetch it myself. Is this the filament you're looking for? No, that's the production schedule you stole in access without authorization. She's tapping the table in a badly concealed impatience. I don't need it. In his defense, it was simply lying in the desk drawer of an abandoned cubicle. Okay, but still. What is an offsite copy and why do you need it? It's a backup of my former employee's pro employer's project, the radio game we were working on. It's stored on a filament memory, just like the one inside the radio computer. She points to the glowing cube inside the computer. He's making it extra simple for you. The backup itself is destroyed now, but I'm hoping to use what's left of it to pinpoint the exact location of the anomaly. You just have to go to my old workspace and get the filament. Hold on. If it's called an off-site copy, then why is it still on-site? If it's called an off-site, then why is it still on-site? Oh god, not this again. She takes a deep breath before letting it all out. It is not on-site, it is in the basement, perfectly safe and not connected to the front at all. Basement sounds like it's technically still on-site. And no, taking it outside the building wouldn't have protected it from the daughter loss. There's nothing wrong with keeping the backup in the basement. What happened was a freak accident that has nothing to do with how the backup was stored. We clear? She stares at you with pleading furious eyes. This is clearly a painful topic for her. She must have had to explain herself numerous times. By your old workspace, do you mean the studio of Fortress Accident in the Doom commercial area? Yeah, that's the one. You get in there through the bookshop. You just have to do something explain to the bookshop. And... Actually, I've already been inside the Doom commercial area. Good. Then you might know the giant ice bear fridge in the building cellar. The filament is inside the fridge. Just go and get it. And where exactly is the offside? copy in the giant ice bear fridge i just told you there's red glowing eyes it's impossible to miss you just need to get the offside copy from the ice bear but you've been to the fridge and it wasn't there there was a note saying i found a note from the ice bear fridge it said the offside copy had been moved to a safer place she freezes wait a note from whom did it specify where they took the filament memory it said the offside copy had been taken to a nearby ice make ice cream maker the note was signed by someone named sully slow Zoisa, of course, she relaxes. Our project lead, Salis, was Zoiso. Zoiso. No, no. God, he was always so hell bent on keeping the copy somewhere safe and feature creep. She mutters, and the valley of the heads. I could have made a difference. The offside copy was perfectly safe when the data loss happened. That data loss was anomalous. She crosses her arms to finally. And the heads, I won't even get into the heads. Millions of them, she stops. Go we'll find that copy from that ice cream maker, will you? Thanks. Lady of the Thousand Heads, you like the sound of that. I found the ice cream maker, but couldn't get it open. It's completely frozen. Yeah, by the way, we put a dead body in the fridge. This is getting ridiculous. Can't you just defrost it? Or I don't know. I don't know about the ice cream maker. Just figure something out. There's a solution, but she doesn't want to hand it over to you yet. It's a thing, some thing she holds dear. Why can't you go and get the filament yourself? The bookstore lady hates me. Says I'm part of the curse, whatever that means. Why does she think you're part of the curse? Because she's from Martinez and people from Martinez have never seen a radio computer. She thinks it emits elemental evil. Now, don't be too harsh, that's only because of their socioeconomic situation. 
Yes, but she literally started praying for the higher powers when she first saw my REM Civic. I'm not making this up. The lieutenant coughs like he's amused. Once I came in one morning and only to find that my terminal was full of those strange trinkets and amulets, wards. It looks like some seminine magic. By the way, we put a dead body in the fridge. Wait, what? She looks up along. Who's dead body? You know, we don't actually have to tell the entire world about the fridge, the lieutenant says, looking at you. Whose body is it? She demands again, staring first at you, then back at the body. It's the body of the hanged man. And what is it doing in the fridge? It's almost as if she feels some sort of ownership of the fridge. Don't worry, I put it there temporarily. It's all part of an official police investigation. You put it there, she leans back, massaging her eyelids. You put a dead body inside the ice bear fridge. Just wanted to let you know. Yeah, that's what I said in the first place. The investigation warranted it. Okay, she says, pressing fingers into her eyebrows. Eyebrow ridge. Very cool. Thanks for keeping me in the loop. You would appreciate it if you kept this knowledge to yourself, miss. Who would I tell? My mother? She shakes her frizzy head. I don't have anyone to tell. And if I did, I wouldn't. I don't care. Alright, I'll go for the offside copy. <sighs> Thanks. She thinks for a moment, then reaches behind the radio computer, hands you what looks like an oversized pry bar. Yes! We got the pry bar at last. Do you know how long this has been bugging me? Since last year. Since, like, the middle of last year. Or since whenever we started this game. And here's my Quelsund multi-tool. You might need to hack it. Need it to hack loose some ice. It opens everything. If you get me the offside copy, then you can keep the Quelsund. It hurts a bit for her to say this. She's not too happy to be partnering with the Quelsund. Okay, right. Yes! Baby! Okay, cool. We can actually do that right now. We actually have two things to look at. We have the Kvalsund. This is an advanced pry bar, a pry bar plus two, if you will, built by Kvalsund in Vasa. The number of gadgets hidden within the frame of the yellow and grey multi-tool will stagger any technician. Equip this to open the lock containers in the world. Yes. And we also got this. The sunlight has made this postcard almost completely sepia-toned. Midtown traffic passes overhead the ghosts of skyscrapers disappear into a beige midday mist. Vapor rising from the delta on which the district was built. The postcard is prepaid. And we also have this cool red dye. Uh, we do have a point that we can put into things. We could either put into composure or drama or suggestion. I don't really know. Let's hold on to it for a minute. I really want to get this thing open. We are creeping on the two hour mark, but I say it's worth it. And what I say goes. It's my stream. Uh, yeah, so the story behind this one. A long time ago, uh, early, early on in the game. Yeah, it was one of the early streams. Uh, we managed to do an amazing, an amazingly lucky roll and got it to work. But it told me I had the wrong pry bar anyway. So I was like, I was so ecstatic and then I read that I didn't have the right pry bar and I just got so furious. I was really livid. So ever since then, I've been like looking for this mysterious second pry bar that we need. And now that we have it, I'm not letting that. I'm not waiting till next week to use it. I'm using it now. Carrying our bag. We've got to do this. Excuse me. We're doing this. This way, Kim. This is it. This is the final boss. This is the final boss of the game. As far as I'm concerned. Okay. Uh, tools. The Kvalsund. Wow, that's huge. Yes. Why is it so low? Why is it so low? I already passed this check. Yeah, I'm saving. I'm saving till we get it. I've already passed this check. I don't... I'm save scumming this if I need to. I do not care. I earned this already. Yeah, cool. 
Eyes squeaks beneath your cavals and multi tool, but your fingers slip away from the tool. The lid shut as hardly as before. Yeah, and it's already unplugged. There's no, not much else to do other than wait for it to defrost to bulk up and get stronger. Uh, yeah, do you know what I'm doing? I want to see what happened. Did it just lock it or something? Uh, it doesn't matter. I'm reloading from that. I, I passed this. You can go back in the VODs. You can find the time when I passed this. And it just told me I had the wrong tool. I don't feel bad about this at all. I've already passed this check. That's what happened. Uh, there is something I can do to increase my physical instrument. There we go. Yeah, slightly higher. Let's go for it. Nope. I really don't care that I'm safe scumming this. You know, I had like a, I think I had a 3% chance and I hit it. It was amazing. Should have seen it. It was beautiful. It was incredible. And then I just got told no. I've already done the hard part. Is it going to do this every single time? Let me check. If we roll eight again. If we roll eight again, I'm going to be a little bit uh, annoyed. No? Okay. We can keep trying. 17% chance we're going to hit it sometime soon. If we have more than one go at it. It'll happen. Just cue the Sakurai gif. This is not how you play the game. Why am I getting such terrible rolls? Such garbage rolls. Like, literally terrible. The 8 wasn't that bad, but I mean... Uh, put on the jacket. Let's go. Finally, success. Ice groans and howls under the strain of your giant falls on multi-tool until the lid cracks open. Darkness lies inside, but you can faintly make out an object, intricate and foreign, left there for a sub-zero beauty sleep. A filament memory with words off-site copy written on its side. Take the filament memory. You gently lift the cube from its frosty bedding, careful to not damage it. We should take it back to Miss Lou Cannon Kilde as soon as possible. I'm not sure how well unused filaments tolerate room temperature. Yes, but aren't you curious to know what's on the precious filament? There's a radio computer upstairs. Nah, it's fine. Uh, we don't need the multi tool. Oh, nope. And clothes, I'd rather have on this one. Cool. Items. Whoa, that one looks cool. The cube like crisscross of filaments feels oddly fragile in your head in your hand. Its intricate structure was still cold to the touch. Silver tape on the side on the side reads offside copy. Note this filament contains information that can be read using a radio computer. Okay, let's just get this to sooner. Sooner rather than later, and I'm saving. Yep, don't feel bad about that at all. I've already passed the check. I will find the clip. I will find the clip. I was just reading something on my phone. Sorry about that. Don't want to waste your time. But let's... Get this to Suna and then wrap up the stream. It's been a good stream. Finally got that little plot point resolved. How much longer on our thought, by the way? It's been over an hour. Yeah, an hour and 48 minutes left. Not bad. Come, Kim. We're saving the day here. It's all connected, Kim. Trust me. It's all connected. I'm not insane. It's very pretty. This landscape is quite beautiful. 
And I suppose this is then considered the east. Yeah, it must be. This direction. It must be the east because of the shadows. Nothing there. Okay. I'm not really curious what's on the offside copy. I just want to give it to her. Hmm, this is the area that we still need to go to. Oh, just a walk, just a walk. No running. Why is it so quiet? Yes, what is it? Oh, the offside copy you asked me to bring? I brought you the filament. Thanks. She takes the filament, inspecting the metallic tape on the side. Looks like it's the one. What's going to happen? Now I'm going to print it out to see what's left all left of it. She's already inserted the filament into the radio computer's core, ready to close the door. Wait, no, that's dangerous. She shouldn't do it. Wait, don't put it in yet. It might be dangerous. She, stares laugh she starts laughing, but stops almost immediately, her voice oddly humorless. No, it's not dangerous, just depressing. How do you know? I have a theory, she says as the filament clicks into place. Lintel was able to divine the anomaly's location from this broken copy. I want to repeat their calculation, only this time with better equipment. Watch, she says and presses print on the machine's keyboard. What an intricate display of failure. The paper starts filling out with ink, soaking it in a gleaming darkness. Not a single line of data stands out. This is wrong. Machines shouldn't behave like that. Something is very wrong with that. A filament memory. Suna doesn't reply, her hands running over the printout. She's looking for something. For a morning star, eyes scouring the millimeters. Here, yeah, she says suddenly, rising her ink stained fingers up. I found it. Where? Hold on. She's behind the keyboard now, typing in some numbers that only she understands. The terminal beeps, and the light, start, light, light inside starts pulsing like a glowing heart. Can I do anything? Shh. Just give me a second. I'm almost... She clocks up her typing speed. The eternal leans closer to the whisper. I've never witnessed a prog uh, program at work before. Done. Suna jumps up from the keyboard like a spring. I've got it. I found the location of the anomaly. There's joy in her voice as she bumps her fist into the air. You did it? Found the coordinates? I found the coordinates. She lets us a celebratory laugh. She's beaming. You can feel it in your heart. Great job. Oh my god. Congratulations. Thank you. She yells back with a grin. So where is it? Where is your two millimeter hole in the world? There. She points at the other end of the church where a group of water balls form a ritualistic arch in the swallow. Think you can help me again? She tilts her head, eyes sparkling. Sure. I need you to go move those water balls for me. I need to double check my calculations. What an interesting proposition. Truly a task for the intellectuals, solving the puzzle of water balls. Right, I'll go figure it out. I'm good at intellectual puzzle. Figure it out. She takes her head grinning. No, I don't need you to figure anything out. I've got a computer for that. She puts the mainframe. Just walk over to the circle and follow my instructions. Move the third ball two centimeters to the left and the fourth ball five centimeters to the right. This should do the trick. What? She only wants you to follow instructions? Nothing intellectually stimulating in the task. A child could do it. Yes, but you like moving things around. Moving things around is calming. Sure, no problem. Thanks, she smiles. Right, I'll let you work in peace now. Let's push them. It'll be quick. Uh, which one? Oh, we can look at all of them. It's awfully silent again, as if someone turned off the entire world outside those walls. Water inside the bowls stands still. Measurements have been marked down around the bowls, each chalk drawn in line representing a centimeter on the floor. Oh boy, this is going to be good. Move the third bowl from the left two centimeters away. It moves like a ghost without creating a single trace of sound. This task is an insult to your mental skills. Move the fourth bowl. Yeah, move the fourth bowl from the left five centimeters to the right. Some water spills out of the bowl, wetting the floor. The lead programmer sends you an encouraging thumbs up from across the hall. Leave. I hope that didn't ruin anything. Is she barefoot? Yes. Wouldn't be surprised. What is it? I've moved the balls. It was mind-numbingly easy. What's next? Wait, everything should be aligned now. She stops biting into her chapped lips. This know it all is hesitating. What's wrong? Yeah, she snaps out of the law. Nothing. Now the only thing left to do is unmute the headphones. If we got the location right, we should then be able to hear whatever sound this anomaly makes. Wait, why did you have your headphones on mute in the first place? Honestly, she's avoiding it. Honestly, I'm a little scared. Isn't it going to be just silence and nothing else? I don't know. She stares at the heart of her computer. That's what I'm scared of. I don't know. It could be anything. I mean, what sound does the nothing make? 
How can you even listen to something that doesn't exist? She turns to face you, the mainframe throwing shadows on her chin. Yeah. What if silence is only what surrounds it, but the swallow itself is... She grows silent, her face very pale in the cold light of electricity. You're overthinking this. Maybe. She rubs her face. Maybe I'm just tired. Let's think about this logically. Why would nothing be terrifying if it's, well, nothing? Why assume that something that has no presence, existence, or qualities has to be terrifying? Because it reminds us of death, and we humans tend to think that death is pretty scary. Death is scary. You can't just start over again, or can you? It's scary, but we just have to face it. Yeah, she breathes in. You're right, let's do it. She puts on her oversized headphones, ready to press unmute on the keyboard. The lieutenant takes a step back, and then nothing. Nothing happens as soon as Lucanon Kielde presses unmute on her keyboard. Nothing but silence. You can hear some small animal across the floor in the uh, chancel. It's that quiet in the sanctuary. Can you hear anything? Say nothing. She doesn't talk, her eyes closed, and brows knitted together in a state of deep focus, one hand cupping the headphone. Well? Damn it. She lets out a loud sigh. Before turning off her headphones, she's still avoiding your gaze. Uh, well, at least the world seems to be still alright. Yeah, yeah, she says disappointed. Nothing happened. Let's move on. Despite her fear, she was hoping for something extraordinary to take place. What do you mean, nothing happened? Did you find the swallow? No. She rests her face on her hands, massaging the forehead. No, my hypothesis was wrong. According to this, I should have heard something if I got the coordinates right. Like I said, science is only what surrounds it. But this, she raises her head, staring at the machines that litter the church, cables coiling up on the floor like pests. This is just another failure. Silence sounds like silence. That's all it is. You can try on the headphones. See if you can hear anything. But don't get your hopes up. Silence is silence. You're sure there's more to it. This can't be it. You should have a listen. Hmm. Okay, let me just put on some things that might help with perception. Do I have anything? Uh, no. 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 Okay. Let's go for it. It's 87%. Uh, 83%. Success. Oh, we just hit it. Everything disappears. You are draped in silence like a drowning man staring into his puny little headspace. And then the pressure changes. What does it mean? It feels like flying on an aerostatic, or when your ears pop, or like a subtle difference in the atmosphere, a weather change hanging in the air. What if the sound you're looking for is too low for you to hear? Sooner, take off the headphones. What if we just need a better sound system? A better sound system? She repeats. Alright, but where would we get one? Suddenly, a rhythmic beat permeates the walls, causing a small patch of decorative stucco to crumble onto the wooden floor. They should really allocate some renovation funds to this place. Remember the lieutenant inspecting the damage done to the arabesques? No, what they really should do is shut down the disco man for disturbing neighborhood peace. Yes, but they could help with the speakers. You mean the speed freaks? She closes her eyes as more dance music invades the holy silence of the sanctuary. Of course, the speed freaks. They have a fantastic sound system, and you think they would help me? They would, if you wouldn't mind them moving in with you. I guess I could live through a week or two of peaceful coexistence. Brilliant negotiating their detective, as always. Great, I'll go talk to them. Sure, let me know how it goes. She lingers for a moment before fighting. Thanks, officer. Right, I'll let you in peace. That's where we're going to end it for the day. Guys, thank you so much for joining me. We did a lot. All of the stuff is coexisting and wrapping into one big massive case. Super massive case. Ooh, I'm exhausted after all that. That was a lot of investigating. Um, yeah. Okay, tomorrow's gonna be pyre. There we go. We did it. Hopefully you can join me for that. I hope you had a good day, and maybe I'll see you tomorrow. Let's just go to the end screen. And I'll say goodbye then. Goodbye.